So I'm going to try to recreate the water leaf soup that we saw Baba Tunde and his wife cook in that recent video in Nigeria. Mm. They're so good. So, so good. So I've been off shopping to the International Food Store in Portswood and I managed to get most of the ingredients that I need. So let's have a look at what I've managed to get. So got some Gary, so dried cassava granules, so this is to make the eba. Peppers, <laughs> scotch bonnet peppers. Now I'm going to make a smaller portion of soup than we saw on the video because there's no way I'm going to get Jenny to eat anything that's got that much pepper in it. Jenny doesn't have such a high tolerance for chilli, although I'm not sure that I do either, but Jenny really has a very low tolerance for chilli, so I'm just going to cook for myself. Maggie or Maggi stock cubes. These are tiny. I don't think these are the same ones, but this is the closest I could get. So these are tiny little things, about a centimetre in cube, so we might have to use a couple of those. Onions, I managed to get the same kind of pink onion that we saw in the video. Now for fish, closest I could get to the dried fried fish that we saw in Baba Tunde's video was this stuff, which is stockfish, which is just dried cod, basically. So we're gonna have to soak that because that's really tough stuff. For the red oil, palm oil, I've got some palm oil here. That's the only palm oil I could find in the shop and it's kind of a solid. That might just be because of the climate here. It's not quite so hot here in the United Kingdom, so it might well be that in a cooler climate that this tends to be solid. But anyway, we've got unrefined palm oil there. And I couldn't get the locust bean paste because, well, the shop was kind of half depleted anyway, but I'm not even sure they stock it under normal circumstances. So I had to kind of improvise for that. And we're going to be substituting miso. So I've got some miso paste here which is fermented beans, fermented soybeans. So not the same thing as fermented locust beans, but hopefully same kind of idea, similar kind of flavor profile, and hopefully that will be close enough to be good enough. So that's our ingredients. Obviously one thing missing is the water leaf. Now again, I can't buy water leaf in this country, couldn't find it anywhere. There were lots of different vegetables in the international food store, but couldn't get water leaf. I imagine it probably just doesn't transport very well. So we're going to substitute something else, and I think that's going to be goosefoot, and we're going to go and forage that now. Okay, so these are the fields where I quite commonly take Doggo for a walk, and they've been left uncultivated, that is fallow, for a couple of years now. And I think I've just seen the plant that I want over there. So yeah, this is the stuff we want here. So this is goosefoot. This is called goosefoot. It looks like we may be actually looking at several different species of goosefoot here. It's actually really difficult to identify um, which species we're dealing with. This could be Good King Henry, it could be one of the other goosefoots. They're quite difficult to tell apart, but as a group they're really easy to identify. So we're going to pick a bit of this goosefoot. It's very plentiful here, so we're going to wander down and find a nice lush bit. Make sure Eva doesn't think it's been weed on by dogs. And then, in fact this looks like a good spot here. So we're going to pick some of this, and this is going to be my substitute for water leaf. Okay, so I'm only making a half portion, so I think that's probably enough there. So let's head for home and make our fake water leaf soup. Okay, so first thing I've got to do is pick over these goosefoot leaves, very much like with the water leaf. There'll be bits in here which are more desirable than others. So I'm just going to pick over leaves probably discard most of the stalks because the stalks have a tendency to be a little bit tough. We'll take the tender stalks. See some of these are much more delicate than others. Now one of the things you might have noticed in the video we saw from Nigeria when they were making water leaf soup was they cut the leaves before washing them. And I don't know what the reason for this is. I would normally rinse things before cutting them. I'm wondering if it was something to do with the way of cutting actually that that taking a big bunch of this and then cutting it by hand might be less safe if the leaves are really wet. Or maybe there's some other reason. So I'm going to do a one rinse before I cut. I'm not going to try and cut them in my hand because I will just cut my hand off. These leaves are dusty and they're going to need a good wash. 
Now this isn't going to be an exact substitute for water leaf, but I can't get water leaf in this country. Or at least I couldn't find it in the shops. I don't suppose it probably travels very well. So I'm going to have to make allowances for the fact that this is different. However, my research suggests that water leaf is actually quite a mild tasting vegetable. And this also is a mild tasting vegetable. It's not closely related. Water leaf is related to carnations and campions. Whereas this goosefoot is related to spinach and beets. But, well, the idea is it's a mild tasting leafy vegetable. I'm hoping it will be close enough. Okay, so I'm not going to try the, the business with holding them in bunches while you slice through them. My, I don't have that skill and I would probably just lose a finger. So I'm going to chop these on the board here. Now my impression is that we're aiming for pieces about maybe one centimetre squared or smaller. So I'm going to chop that way and then run the knife through the other way. Maybe more than once. Let's have a look at what that looks like. It looks about the right size, maybe a bit finer. I think we'll just go one more time through that with the knife. Okay, and now we're going to cover those with water and give them a little soak to rinse any remaining dirt off of them. Now, as I say, this is unusual to me to chop a vegetable, to chop a leafy vegetable, then wash it. But I suspect there might be a reason for this. It wasn't mentioned, but I know that water leaf contains oxalates. And I'm wondering whether chopping and then rinsing helps to rid it of some of those oxalates before it's cooked. Interestingly, goosefoot has the same property. It does contain oxalates. So we're hopefully doing the same thing here. That's just a theory. Anyway, next leap, peppers and onion. So <laughs> this is the part that might kill me. I've got myself some scotch bonnet peppers here. Just going to take the stalks off. These are closest I could find to the peppers we saw on Babatunde's video. I think they are a Scotch bonnet type pepper that they grow out in Africa there. Obviously not exactly the same, but yeah, I think what we saw there was, was definitely some local variety similar to this. I'm making about half the quantity of soup that we saw on Babatunde's video, so I'm using about half the quantity of peppers. Okay, I don't have one of those funky little hand food processors, so I'm going to use my electric food processor and grind up these peppers with about, well, I think it was about three quarters of the onion, because I did notice that one quarter of the onion was just sliced into pieces and put in whole. I don't know if that was intentional or if there just wasn't room in that little processor, but I'm going to try and follow along with that. So I showed it up the peppers. I'm afraid I didn't get that on camera because I wasn't recording with three quarters of the onion. <coughs> the the shredding of the peppers is already make, making me cough and catch my breath a little bit. So yeah, this could be interesting. <coughs> so I couldn't get fermented locust bean paste, so I'm going to use miso paste instead. Hopefully close, close enough analog. So there's no preparation required there. Just, <coughs> just going to now do the fish. Okay, and this stockfish cod is a bit tougher than the fish we saw in Babatunde's video because it's a it's a bigger fish. I, <clears throat> I don't know actually what the fish was that they used but this is a bit kind of more substantial and meaty. I'm going to take the skin off because the skin goes really rubbery on this stockfish so just gonna pull that apart and I'm going to cut these into smallish pieces and otherwise it's going to be great big chewy chunks of fish which whilst that might be nice it's not quite what we're looking for in a soup okay so big pan and i've got my palm oil here which actually we've got a warmer day today so this has gone slightly liquid so i need to be careful how i open this so yeah it's still fairly solid but there you go so that's the the red oil. I think that's probably because we're making half as much. I think that's probably about the right amount. And I'll get that going. 
Well, what's interesting there is the smoke point of this oil appears to be really, really low. I imagine that's because it's the unrefined. I think I've got too much oil in there. So I'm actually going to hook a bit of that out. Quite an aroma to this oil. In with the chilies and onion, the peppers and onion. I think I might have more pepper there than I really need, but again, yeah. we're not going to worry too much about that. And I'm going to let that sizzle for a little bit with the lid on. Okay, that's softened down quite nicely. So in with the fish. And I can't remember, I can't remember what happens next. Uh, the stock cube and the, the lotus bean paste. Now these little stock cubes here are tiny compared to what we saw these are like a centimeter cubed, so I think I'm probably going to need at least two of these to make up the equivalent of half of one of the regular cubes. Gosh, they're really fiddly. So, can I crush that in the packet and sprinkle it in? Yes, I can. Imagine I'm just opening the wrong bit here because it shouldn't be this fiddly. Right, and. I think two will probably be enough. Okay, and now the miso paste. Well, that much, maybe a bit more. Okay, well, one thing I can say is that there are smells coming out of here that are very unfamiliar to me. I think the palm oil has more flavour than I expected, or certainly has more aroma than I expected. And so that palm oil is a real it's a flavour component in itself. So that's going to be interesting. And the last little bit of onion. So there's no liquid added. It's just the moisture from the leaves is going to cook down. Well, that's the theory. So turn that right down, lid on and give it a simmer for five to ten minutes. Okay, we're about five minutes into cooking. I still think that needs to cook down a little bit. I think those leaves are not quite soft enough just yet, but it's coming together and it's starting to look kind of authentic. I mean, given that we had to wing it a bit on many of the ingredients. Okay, I think that is done. So I'm going to turn that off and we've got to now make the ebba. Okay, now I couldn't find a recipe for how much water to gary that you use to make ebba. So I've just got to kind of wing it. So I've got my gary here and apparently you just kind of pour it in until you can't see very much water left. So like that, I guess. And then we just stir this and knead it. Now it's got an interesting aroma. It's got a slightly sour sort of aroma to it. Yeah, it's starting to get doughy, that's good. And we just keep at this for a few minutes until, well, until I guess we feel like we've Got the desired texture. I am completely out of my depth here so I don't even know if I'm doing this right but it seems to be more or less resembling what we've got on Baba Tunde's video. It's now coming together into a dough. I think I might have gone a little bit dry here. I, think I maybe should have added a little bit more water or a little bit less gary but never mind. Right, so let's serve up. Okay. Right. Well, 
There it is. Let's go and get outside of that. Okay, here we go. I'm going to have to apologise for the dog barking in the background. Um, she's outside playing ball with the family. So, finger bowl. And I think this is not only just to wash my hands, but I think this might be to stop the yeah to stop the the ebba from sticking to them quite so much. <clears throat> so, got a little bit of that there, and then. Okay, going to need a moment to process this. It's really, really spicy, but actually not, not desperately hot. It's really got a good spicy chili flavor, but it's not, it's not beyond my limit. So I'm going to enjoy this. It's really tasty. I'm struggling here because obviously I would normally eat with a knife and fork and spoon, but I thought I'd try and make the experience as authentic as I can. I'm going to say this is probably the most unusual thing I've eaten for quite a long time. It's really spicy. The flavours in here, that palm oil, I've never really cooked with raw palm oil like that before. But that brings a flavour dimension to it. And, yeah, I mean, I guess with the authentic locust bean paste, there would be another dimension of flavour in there, which I'm probably missing here. But hopefully the miso has given it something similar. So, yeah, I mean, what an amazing thing. Totally different to really anything I've had that I can remember. So there we go. I'm not going to talk anymore because the chilli is really challenging my palate. But... I'm enjoying it. It's the, I would say the spice level is below that of those two times spicy noodles, but above Shin Ramyun probably, if that gives you any kind of handle on what the spice level is in here. It's really nice. It's a chilli burn that's on the lips, but also right at the back of the throat. So it's not one of those ones that just hurts your entire head. Uh, those Scotch bonnet chilies have got a nice warm chilli heat in the back of the throat and a burn on the lips, but my tongue mercifully is not on fire. Future Shrimp here. I'm editing the video that you're now watching. Uh, that's weird. How does that work? And enjoying, while I have my lunch break, the leftovers from yesterday's fake water leaf soup. I'm adding this bit in because I realised there's a few things I probably forgot to say, mainly because, for one thing, I was overwhelmed by the chilly heat of this, but also the whole experience actually was just quite alien to me, and I was struggling to find the words to describe what I was eating. So. I've revisited this today. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about the flavours and about what this is actually like to eat. So the first thing to say is this is probably too much chilli for me. So this is a level of spice that's just beyond my comfort level. So it's pretty darn hot. Um, a little bit too hot for me to eat comfortably, but I did enjoy it anyway. The other thing is that eating soup, well it's more like a stew, but eating soup with your hands is a skill that I just haven't been brought up with. So I'm today using a spoon, um, as is my cultural background, but it was quite interesting to have, to have a go at that. Yeah, not going to master that now, not at my age. So I don't want to rant and rave about what is, at its heart, quite a simple dish here, but I do want to talk a little bit more about the flavours and the aroma. This is a deeply, deeply savoury dish, and the aroma of because it's got the dried fish in there and there's something that these green leaves do as well that compound that fishy flavour that just makes it quite a pungent dish. I would liken it to the experience of my first authentic Thai food dish. It was like it, it just this wall of aroma hit me and um, it was quite overwhelming and, and, and could have been off-putting. Same is true of this. There is a, a very, very pungent and strong aroma from this soup, which could have been off-putting. But my experience with these things is that you just power past that and the flavour is all there. It's no different 
to the idea of Stilton cheese. If you get a piece of Stilton cheese and shove that next to your nose, the smell you smell there is not in any way something you could describe as pleasant, but you power past that and what you've got is a flavour reward that's really well worth it. And this is the same. So this is this takes a little bit of adjustment of the taste buds and adjustment of the, the expectations, but actually the flavour that's underneath there is is kind of amazing. And part of that is because it's just it's just full of sensation. Oh yeah, so so the Eba, the starchy staple we've got with this, made from cassava, um, made from Gary, is how to describe that. So if you like suet dumplings, you're very likely to like Eba. It's not the same, but it appeals to many of the same sensations and tastes. So yeah, I, I, I was expecting it to be really, really bland in a way that some starches are. But actually its flavour is comparable to that of wheat flour, bread sort of flour. But it's, So it's got a nice starchy flavour of its own. So the other thing to say is that the all that greenery we put in there, all those leaves, did some kind of chemistry thing with the other flavours in the dish. Some kind of alchemy type of thing goes on here. And the, so with the strong aroma of the dried fish and the spices, all of those red peppers, the green leaves did something that was quite unexpected for me and so yeah they end up they end up with a flavor that yeah I, I wasn't expecting to find in there so do I think I nailed it who knows I really can't tell obviously there could be some subtle flavors from the water leaf that are absent from this because I used a different leaf and I had to substitute a few other things as well do I think I got close I reckon maybe I don't know maybe we're at 80 percent of the way there with this. I think maybe this is a 80% authentic flavour representation of what Babatunde and his wife cooked. Who knows? Maybe one day I'll get a chance to test the authentic thing. The final question is, should you try this? Well, if you're, if you're a person with the average British palate, like I generally am, so I like, I like things like fish and chips. I like some, some quite subtle things like cheese omelettes and so on, which are not powerfully spicy and um, a lot of people might think they're bland but I would prefer to describe them as subtle are you gonna like this well you're gonna find this a challenge you're gonna find this an assault on your senses but I'm gonna say it's worth it why not it's worth a try you might not like it I'm not absolutely certain that I really like it but it's been tremendously stimulating and it's been a real surprising experience so I'm enjoying it just for the fact that it's something different something outside of my experience and I just enjoyed really going there so anyway I'm going to shut up now and hand you back to past shrimp so there we go as close as I can make it water leaf soup from Nigeria with Eba thanks for watching Babatunde I am interested to hear what you think of this please rate me on my efforts here I did my best I don't think I've really quite nailed it but this is really interesting and I've thoroughly enjoyed it. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.